Hello everyone. Today we will see the anatomical basis of Horner syndrome. Horner syndrome usually presents with partial ptosis, that is drooping or falling of upper eyelid, meiosis, that is the constriction of pupil, facial anhydrosis, that is the loss of sweating in the face, then loss of ciliospinal reflex. We will explain the ciliospinal reflex at the end. Okay. So, in the Horner syndrome, these features are happening due to disruption in the sympathetic nerve supply to the face. There are several alternative terminologies used in terms of Horner syndrome or the Bernard Horner syndrome, a close sympathetic palsy. The name indicate sympathetic supply to the eyeball. Okay, so oculosympathetic palsy, Von Passau syndrome. This is the Horner syndrome with iris heterochromatia. Iris heterochromatia means the uh, different color iris, okay, which we seen in the few people. Moving to the sympathetic innervation of eye. Okay, to understand the clinical feature of Horner syndrome, you should understand the sympathetic innervation of eye completely. So, here you can able to see, uh, this is the hypothalamus, brain stem and here the continuation is the spinal cord, this is the C8 and T2 segment of the spinal cord. From here, this is a sympathetic chain, okay, here superior cervical ganglion and this is the internal carotid artery and here the eyeball, okay. Now, we will see what is the sympathetic flow. So, the first order neuron which starts from the hypothalamus passes through the brain stem. It relays, it relays in the C8 to T2 segment of the spinal cord. Okay, so this is the first order neuron. From here, the second order neuron starts from C8 to T2. Then from here, it goes uh, to the sympathetic chain. Then from there, it ascends up to the cervical ganglion that is the superior cervical ganglion so first three uh, cervical ganglion joins to form a superior cervical ganglion from here the third order neuron arises and it uh, we all know the post ganglionic fiber from the sympathetic supply is usually accompanying a blood vessel okay preferably the arteries okay so it will be accompanying the internal carotid artery okay we are that it is not only supplying from the uh, superior cervical ganglion, it not only supplying to the eyeball, it supplying to the whole of the face, okay, mainly the head and neck completely. So, uh, particularly in this, it will be going in the internal carotid artery as a plexus. In the cavernous sinus, these plexus is accompanied by the, uh, or it is mingled with the abdusal nerve, okay, cranial nerve 6. Then, when it, when the, uh, fibers leaving the cavernous sinus, it will be leaving via the ophthalmic branch of trigeminal nerve. Okay, ophthalmic branch of trigeminal nerve, then via long ciliary nerve, it will be supplying to the iris, that is the dilator uh, muscles present in the iris. Then it will be also supplying to the superior tarsal muscle, that is the molar muscle in the eyeball. Okay, so this dilator. Uh, pupil will be responsible for the dilatation, that is the mitriasis. So, when there is disruption in this pathway, it leads to meiosis. Then, there will be a superior tarsal plate responsible for the opening of upper eyelid. So, when it is disrupted, it will be leads to dropping of the upper eyelid. So, with this, we will move to the next, that is the causes of Horner syndrome. So, there are several causes of Horner syndrome, okay, which can be categorized into defect in any first order neuron, second order neuron and third order neuron, okay. So, by just seeing those, uh, the previous slide itself, you can be able to correlate many things like cerebrovascular accident. It may happen in the uh, hypothalamus, brain stem, okay. Then, uh, these are the, uh, most of the condition, if you see, it will be affecting the brain stem and the spinal cord, okay, uh, up to the level of T2, okay, below the level of T2, if there is any defect, it won't be affecting the sympathetic supply to the 
I1. Then these are the second order neuron. That is from the brain stem or the, from the spinal cord to the uh, sympathetic uh, ganglion. That is here mainly the superior cervical ganglion. Okay. So uh, you must have studied uh, uh, Horner syndrome in case of Klumke's paralysis also, which is the T1, C8 and T1 injury. So because of T1 injury, the fibers will be affected. So this is the injury happening in the second order neuron. Okay. So from here coming to next is the third order neuron. That is we are it's going in closely related to the blood vessel, mainly the internal carotid artery. So or in the cavernous sinus or wherever if there is any damage to the blood vessel or these nerves will lead to Horner syndrome again. So uh, this clinical feature see there is partial ptosis in the Horner syndrome because the movement of upper eyelid is also contributed by the levator palpebrae superioris which is supplied by the oculomotor nerve. So that is actually the major contribution. So in this Horner syndrome, there will be partial ptosis, which will be slightly less when we compare with the uh, paralysis of oculomotor nerve. Then, this myosis we have already explained because the sympathetic supply is giving the dilator pupillae. So, when it is disturbed, it will be giving the constriction of pupil that is the myosis. Facial antitrosis because this sympathetic innervation not only is given for the eye, it also giving whole head and neck. So it leads to facial antihydrosis. Usually in the sympathetic uh, tract lesion, it will be the unilateral. Okay, so uh, there is uh, no bilateral representation. So if there is any defect in the right side, it will be affect right side half of the face. So usually it will be ipsilateral uh, side of facial antihydrosis. Then loss of ciliospinal reflex. Okay, so the pathway for the ciliospinal reflex is also the same. The ciliospinal reflex means if there is any painful stimulus over the cervical region. Okay, for example, pinching in the uh, cervical uh, neck region of the right side will leads to will leads to dilatation of the pupil in the same side, ipsilateral dilatation. Okay, so this is because when there is painful stimulation the sympathetic will be overactive so mediasis will be happening to look for what is the reason for stimulus okay so it's a kind of protective reflex so the pathway is again the same from the cutaneous innervation it will go to the dorsal root ganglion from there as a reflex or it will be coming to the sympathetic then there will be mediatic uh, happening in the eyeball okay so this is known as a ciliospinal reflex so this reflex is taking the sympathetic pathway okay so when there is damage to the sympathetic pathway so there will be loss of ciliospinal reflex also thank you for watching the video hope you have understood the harness syndrome in detail if you like this video mention in the comment so that we can make more related videos in the concepts of clinical anatomy thank you for watching